Hey guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about To All The Boys, P.S. I Still Love You. I wanted to talk about it because it's literally the worst movie I've seen in so long. But I do have to put a disclaimer at the very beginning that obviously there's gonna be spoilers, so if you haven't seen it yet and wanna see how bad it is, or I mean some people liked it, but if you wanna see it for yourself, maybe watch the movie first and then come back. A little bit of background. To All The Boys I Loved Before came out on Netflix in 2018 and people loved it. It, it became like some sensation for at least people around my age and probably high schoolers, but it was just like a like a teen love story movie that a lot of people could relate to and it was really cute. It was based on a book and people just really enjoyed it. I personally enjoyed it. I related to the main character. When they announced that they were going to do a sequel, I was interested to see where the story would go next. Having not read the books, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I didn't expect what movie they did come out with. A lot of the reason I didn't like this movie I think is because I don't like Noah Centineo. When watching the first movie, I don't think anyone really knew a lot about like who he was or what he was like and didn't realize that he was a f boy. So I wanted to give just a little bit of background about Noah Centineo because he is most of the reason I didn't like this movie. And um, I feel like I need to explain why because there are still a lot of people who do like him. He says very strange things on Twitter and on social media and he just seems like a f boy that you'd meet in high school or in college and like immediately dislike. One of his most recent things he's posted on Instagram is this picture and he says, all I do is sleep on couches, listen to pop music, and waste my parents' money. Also on Twitter, he says some pretty confusing things. In February, he tweeted saying, we can still think those thoughts we thought before we thought better of them. I don't know if he's trying to sound intelligent but like that just didn't make any sense so like if you're thinking something racist but now you realize oh it's racist he's saying you can still think that he just says a lot of stuff that seems like fake intelligent or like like he's trying to seem like really like existential or something like this tweet he says bravery is not defined by the absence of fear but by the courage one has to continue onward when drowning in their own greatest fears despite your greatest fears continue forward like that's just something that's so generic and you can tell that he's not the one saying it either someone's telling him to say it or he like found it somewhere and is trying to make it seem like he thought of it himself even like in person though, Noah Centineo doesn't really make any sense. When he won a People's Choice Award, he gave a speech that didn't seem like he was thinking while he was speaking. And before I go, I just want to say it matters not what you've done, but what you do with what you've done for others. Thank you. You can tell that he's trying to sound smart and he's trying to sound motivational but he doesn't know what he's saying at all a lot of people have made fun of it and i think people are starting to see that maybe noah centineo isn't like the best guy and he seems kind of fake so then watching this movie it's kind of hard to separate him from the character peter kavinsky because they do seem pretty similar and it's just like really really cringy before we get started i just want to let you know that netflix is really picky about like screen recording like they don't let you screen record things so any footage that I have in here, I'm just taking from their trailer. Right away at the beginning of the film, Lara Jean, the main character, is getting ready for a date. And then she comes downstairs, the doorbell rings, and what do you know? It's Noah Centineo. I like literally cringed when I saw him on the screen and I was like, oh God, I don't know if I can do this. This movie's gonna be rough. So then they go on their first date and you can tell right away that they don't have good chemistry. I don't think that's just me personally being like, wow, God, I really don't like Noah Centineo. So I just am not gonna like this. Like they literally don't have good chemistry and I wish I could show you this scene, but I think I'm gonna have to act it out. Wow, they have big menus here. Bigger the menu, the fancier the restaurant. It's actually a two fork restaurant. They give you the second one in case you drop the first one on the floor. No, that's not it. That's what it is. No, it's not. Watch, ready? Peter, stop. Oh my god. Peter. It's a good thing I have my backup. <laughs> so yeah, just right off the bat, the movie's like really cringy and gross. She gets a letter back from the other guy who had gotten a letter in the last movie, John Ambrose McLaren, who looks a little different in this movie. Like, not, not, not the same guy. 
what are you doing why are you doing that hmm so yeah then we get like the main not really the main plot line because there kind of isn't a plot so at school all the seniors have to sign up for a place to volunteer at and peter wants to volunteer at a place with his friends but Lara Jean thought that they were going to volunteer at the same place together. So, setting up conflict. They kind of talk it out, but really Lara Jean just kind of said, It's okay, go like do what you want and it'll be fine. So, she signs up to volunteer at um, this place called Bellevue, which is a living facility for older people. But it's still like pretty ritzy and like expensive. So, like right away you kind of get the setup that, you know, they don't fully get along. There's... A little bit of conflict there. Then they set up this weird, like, B story where Lara Jean's dad, it seems like, is flirting with their neighbor. Like, they seem to kind of like each other. There's, like, a few scenes sprinkled in, like, three max throughout the movie. And then that's it. Like, they don't resolve anything. She shows up for, like, some dinner at their house. And then she's never spoken of again for the rest of the movie. And it just feels like they were writing the script and they were like, okay, we're going to have all this in here. And then they just like dropped it out. And then the rest of it's just about Lara Jean and then we're done. So anyway, we kind of get to meet Lara Jean's other love interest in this movie, John Ambrose. In my mind, there's no contest. We've got Peter Kavinsky and we've got John Ambrose McLaren. Like, he's like the clear answer. He's just like honestly a nicer person. And you see right away from the very beginning, he like ends up volunteering at the same place that Lara Jean's volunteering at. And she like slips and falls on the ground and he literally runs to her and checks to see if she has a concussion. Can you picture Peter Kavinsky doing that? No, he would just stand there and laugh. It seems like that's how the movie's going. Like clearly they're setting it up that oh, he's like the new love interest and this is how it's gonna be. And so I'm sitting here watching the movie like, okay, like that's what's gonna happen. There's a really funny scene on Valentine's Day. Peter takes Lara Jean to the track where they like first kiss and he gives her this ugly ass necklace. And then he goes on to read her a poem, which immediately sounded familiar. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if I've heard this before. But, you know, maybe it just sounded like something else that I'd heard earlier in my life. I don't know. Well, later on in the movie, you find out that he plagiarized it from Edgar Allan Poe. How dumb do you have to be to think that you can get away with plagiarizing Edgar Allan Poe? Like, he's one of the most famous poets and authors that you learn about in school, especially in high school. Like, they're probably currently reading Edgar Allan Poe in class, and he just plagiarizes one of his poems. And she does nothing about it. Like... She's just like, why did you do that? And he's like, oh, well, you know, I just thought it fit and I've never written a poem before or whatever. And then she just accepts it again. Like, like this movie is basically just Lara Jean being a pushover for no, like, she should be standing up for herself and she should be talking to her boyfriend about what's okay and what's not okay and her feelings about everything. Another thing, too, with Lara Jean and John Ambrose is just that in every scene that they're in, there's just so much more, like, sexual tension. And I know they're high schoolers, so I'm not saying, like, oh, you know, whatever. Like, no. But there's so much more sexual tension between Lara Jean and John Ambrose than there is between Lara Jean and Peter Kavinsky. Lara Jean and Peter seem like friends. They don't really seem like they're dating. But John Ambrose very clearly loves her and, like, wants what's best for her and genuinely cares about her. Later in the movie, Lara Jean ends up going to a party with Peter, but they don't, like, stay together, which is also something weird to me. I feel like if people are dating, then generally they would hang out together at a party and, like, be a couple. Like, you know, you can go and talk to other people, that's fine, but also still like be around each other especially because they're like newly dating you know like they haven't been dating for that long you'd think they'd want to be around each other and then Lara Jean tells one of her friends that every time she's with Peter and like around him that she's just always thinking about him and his ex and how like all of his firsts he had with that girl and not with her and she's having all her first with him and that she feels like he's judging her for that or comparing the, the two of them which is something that's totally valid but like that should be a red flag to her. Lara Jean and John Ambrose get together their whole like middle school friend group and they dig up a time capsule that they like buried together. John Ambrose finds out that Lara Jean and Peter are dating which is upsetting to him because he didn't know that and he really liked Lara Jean and then once everybody leaves Peter and Lara Jean like finally have a fight but it's not really a fight it's more like half a fight and they don't really talk about their feelings at all and then the second that they start actually fighting Lara Jean asks if they're gonna break up which is also like not a good 
first instinct to have in a relationship. She finally tells him how she feels about him and Jen, his ex, and then they just kind of hug and that's really it. They don't really make up, but um, they think that they do. Which is just like, I don't know if that's just a high school relationship thing, but like you actually have to talk to someone and work things out. You can't just like have a half fight and then pretend that things are okay and move on. Like you're going to have bigger problems later, which is exactly what happens. Lara Jean gets all dressed up for Peter's game. She goes to like send him off on the bus and her best friend comes over and shows her a picture of him and his ex like holding each other's hands and they have like a weird fight again when he comes by and she's like hey were you talking to Jen again and he's like oh yeah but like it's not what you think or whatever and then I, I guess they end up breaking up I don't know that was kind of a confusing scene to me so then we go back to volunteering at the Bellevue Lara Jean and John Ambrose are setting up like some ball for all the people who live there John Ambrose actually like tells her about his feelings which to me is another sign that, okay, maybe this guy's better for you. They're setting up this ball. Um, they're all dressed up and really nice and all like the older people are like, oh, you two should get together. You two should dance and it's really cute. And there's definitely like something there between the two of them. And you can tell that John Ambrose still really, really loves her. And they actually dance together and it's again, really cute. And then they go outside and then they kiss which is to be expected in a rom-com like this. And then he goes in to kiss her again and she pulls away. And then John Ambrose is like, it's Peter, isn't it? And then she says yes and leaves. Just objectively speaking, like you look at John Ambrose and you look at Peter and how they treat Lara Jean. The fact that she goes to the guy who's toxic for her at the very end is so upsetting. And then she just leaves John Ambrose alone out in the snow after just kissing him. She opens the door again to Noah Centineo's face and it just ends. We don't get to find out about the neighbor and her dad. We don't get to find out if John Ambrose actually gets to be happy ever, even though he deserves it. There's so many loose ends that are left untied and I just don't understand. Like, did they just like, accidentally stop writing the script and then they were like oh wait shit we didn't finish like we'll just quick like put this in and then yeah let's just film it okay because it it seems so rushed at the end and it doesn't make any sense so yeah that's that's the movie it ends with Lara Jean and Peter going off together still being a couple and John Ambrose McLaren is this sweet guy who genuinely cares about this girl that he's liked since middle school. He plays the piano and talks to her about her feelings. He's volunteering to help like these older people and to put on this like great dance for them. He dresses up in a white tux. Like he's so cute. He's just like a cute character. And she picks Noah Centineo. I don't know. I, I'm trying to understand what happened with this movie and why the first movie and the second movie feel so different. Um, and I think the answer is that the first movie was directed by a woman and this movie was directed by a man. I think the director of the sequel isn't able to convey the female experience the way a woman can. I don't know why the first director didn't come back, but I think Netflix made the wrong choice. My main reason for talking about this is not just that it's a bad movie, because it definitely is a bad movie, but also because the relationships that they're portraying aren't healthy and a lot of young kids watch these movies and I don't want young people to think that if their significant other is being like Peter that they should just sit there and take it. I, people need to stand up for themselves and understand what it is that they want and if they aren't sure then maybe you know take a step back but don't Take the steps that Lara Jean took. Also, don't date Noah Centineo, I guess. If you look at Letterboxd as well, like, people's reviews of the two movies are very different. For the first movie, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, it has an average of a 3.4 out of 5 stars. And then if you go to the second movie, it has an average of 2.6 out of 5 stars. So, clearly people aren't liking this movie as much as the other one. And um, if you look at the reviews as well, it's kind of mixed reviews. Some people really like the movie and other people really hate the movie. It's generally one of the two. This person named Grace on Letterboxd, her review just says, should men direct movies? Let's discuss. And I think 
that's that's a good thing to discuss. After seeing the difference between these two movies, it's very clear that there's a disconnect, and clearly we do need more female directors making movies because there are voices that aren't being heard, and there are voices that are being portrayed incorrectly, and that needs to stop. If you are interested in people's reviews, you can look it up on Letterboxd. It's free to make an account. I'm not sponsored by Letterboxd, but I do have an account, so you can see what I thought of it, um, and you can see all the other reviews that I have about movies that I've seen. My account is just Gabby Elliott, uh, so you can very easily look me up. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, also at Gabby Elliott. So if you like this video, uh, please give it a like and comment what you thought of the movie or what movie you'd want me to review next. And then also subscribe if you want to see more videos I make. Um, I try to make videos every week. I think that's all I have for you. See you next time.